Okay, so what is the time now? Uh, map, can, wait, can I view the map? Actually, uh, settings, keyboard, what is the key for the map? Sneak, weapons, action, inventory, player status, look around, run. Oh! map to so right now i think the game might crash because last time i played it with this patch when i tried to look at the map to the old mine the game crashed let's see if it happens okay the game did not crash yet but this is the path to the old mine and here we are that white arrow inside of the old camp that that is the old map uh Right now it is 7.42 in the morning and NPCs are starting to wake up. So in this, this is actually one of the first or one of those games where the idea of uh, NPCs time and schedule during the day came to be like you have to program every single NPC uh, in order to make the world seem to be alive and vibrant. And this is 18 years ago, so what they have, what they've done is just wonderful. Guy? Should we talk to the guy? Hey guy, what's up? Oh, I didn't mean to sit here. Let's get up. Hello. Hmm, I haven't seen you before. You're new here, aren't you? Just recently arrived. Have you already decided which camp you want to join? No, what do you think? Well, it depends. Each camp has its advantages, I guess. Until you've made your decision, you can stay here. A hut just became available. What are the advantages of the old camp? If you pay protection money to the guards, you can have a laid-back life here. They always interfere if one of the paying diggers is attacked. Besides, you can only get the goods from the outside world cheap here. These things are unaffordable in the other camps. Mm -hmm. Maybe. And what if two people fight each other who both pay protection money? Then the guards just watch until one of them kills the other. Then they do him in. Wow, so they killed both people. Because, keep in mind, everyone here is a prisoner. They're not actual guards, so they behave like animals toward each other. Well, I shouldn't say animals. They behave like savages toward each other. What goods are considered precious here? Everything from the outside world. Bread, cheese, and bacon, and above all, beer and wine. Not the cheap rice schnapps from the new camp, but really good stuff. You always get a good price for weapons, and armor is really expensive. The guards took the old armor off the prison guards after they killed them. You can always recognize them by their armor. They only sell it to other guards. You could never get a hold of one as an outsider. Makes sense, because, well, it's an ID. I think I've heard enough about the old camp. I like it here. Let's talk about something else. What are the advantages of the new camp? If you're cool about getting your throat cut for a slice of you bread, should you should go there. there. No, it's not that bad, but it's different from here. Here, Gomez takes care that things are sort of peaceful. In the new camp, there is no law. The only ones powerful enough to have a say there are the water mages, but they're too busy studying the barrier all day. Why should I join the sect? Well, you better ask somebody from the sect camp. There are always a couple of novices in the camp, and I'm sure they can tell you a lot about the sect. I've never been there myself, but according to everything that's said, they must be really generous. None of the three camps seems to be as much in need of new people as the sect camp. Mm -hmm. 
Which of the huts can I take for myself? The hut over there with the little canopy is empty. All right. Makes sense. Thank you, guy. Oh, what is this? Anvil? Digger. Kuno. It looks as if you knew what you were doing. Nobody ain't complained yet. But that would be a bad idea anyway. Every idiot here needs a sword, and that is what they get from me. How long does it take you to make one blade? That depends. I'm as fast as a hurricane with simple swords. Of course, only on condition that the price motivates me. A freak like Whistler usually has to wait longer for his toy than other people. Why? Doesn't he pay enough? No, on the contrary. He gave me 150 ore for his last sword. The guy is into ornaments and girly stuff like that, and of course that's not cheap. <laughs> hey, you ain't curious at all, are you, pal? Yeah, see, the voice acting was a little off. Technically, he should have waited for me and said, You are not curious at all, are you? I, about, you know, me, if I would just be standing there. and you're, like, you're not curious at all, are you? But the pause was a little off. And that's the, the voice acting part that was not done very well by the English translators. But that's okay. It, I think it doesn't take away this much from the game's quality. I'd like to try working here as well. Ah, but don't you think that you can make great blades? What do I have to do? Okay, take the steel and hold it into the fire. Then you have to lay the red-hot steel across the anvil. When you're finished, you put the hot blade into the water bucket over there to temper it. The cooled blade finally has to be sharpened on the grindstone. I see. However, you'll need some things for that. I could sell them to you. Would you? I'd like to buy some blacksmith equipment. All right. So it's blades. Blade is 80. Glowing blade is 64. Glowing steel is 51. And raw steel is 40. So every stage of production improves or makes the price of whatever it is you want to buy higher right in other words whatever you make you can sell for more right so let's save the game and here is a here's a little thing that if you have played the game enough and you you just know what is where and how the NPCs react then you can take advantage of it, right? So right here there is a chest. And it's locked. Let's go... Okay, left is incorrect. Right. 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 Okay. Right. Right. Left. Okay. Load. Uh, yeah, here we go. Right, right, left. Okay, let's try to remember that. Right, right, left, right. Right, right, left, right, left, left. Right, right, left, right, left, left. There are 20 raw steels and went in two crude swords. No one is yelling at me. No one at all. Now, unless you've tried it, you don't know it. But, you know, because I've tried it, I know that this is there. And within the constraints of the game, we're totally cool. So, right now, I have this crude sword for free which is 100 ore if i were to buy it and it does 20 damage what we have now does 12 damage so we're gonna equip that 
Okay. And we have... Let's see. 20 raw steels, which is what? 20 times... It says that the value is 40. And if we were to buy it, we would have to pay 80 times 20, which is like 1600 ore. So I'm gonna save the game again. Go right there and just start working. Right? If you hear me clickety click click, it's because I am clicking and pushing forward button really, really fast, right? To turn all of those raw steels into a glowing steel, right? I'm just gonna forge a bunch of swords. Just a bunch of them, right? Um, if you want to check out Gothic, right? If you've never played this game, but you are interested in playing it, uh, you don't have to do what I did, but if you do this, it is going to save you a lot of trouble later on. I shouldn't say trouble. You can play the game any way you want, and you can go on Steam and get it and don't do this. And just play it as if, hey, well, what if I didn't know that you could open those chests and get this loot? What if I just wanted to play the game normally? I shouldn't say normally. Uh, let me say instead, if you wanted to play the game as if you are ignorant of of what to do and how to do inside of the game, go ahead and do it. As I, as I play through this game, in this playthrough, I'm just saying I will be mentioning things in terms of mechanics that will basically let you let you shortcut right this is not from outside of the constraints of the game this is due to the fact that I've played it so many times and I've learned and saw so many things most of them were accidental Actually, all of them were accidental because um, all right, this guy is this guy is working. Okay, there we go. Most of them. Oh, did the game crash? Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. Okay, I have to go to the task manager and restart it. I cannot. Uh, I cannot see the screen, unfortunately, it, um... Oh! So, I think one of the reasons why the game, the game crashed is because the game, it says, it's made for the 32-bit system, and my, uh, Windows 10 is 64-bit, I think it is, and that's why certain things may just working not, maybe working not very, uh, uh, or not properly but uh yeah you will see this happen like several times through this playthrough but it's okay as long as you can bear with me and not worry about the fact that sometimes the game crashes it's, it's all right um so let's just reforge the swords and i will save the game again before before going onto the anvil um just so you know when i played the original version of the game this type of these types of crashes on the older systems they never happen not once did the game crash uh, i i've said that before in this playthrough and i'll try not to reiterate it but i might um the reason why this game is crashing right now every now and then it's because my system is too modern for it like certain things inside of the game may be crashing because the technology is too new uh, but it it does not take away from the quality of it all right let's finish forging our swords i don't remember how much the game costs but i'll say right off the bat that if you like uh, single-player games where you go through the story as a nameless hero and 
you grow as a character and you enjoy a, a rich environment that you can just dive into and have fun on the inside of, Gothic 1 is definitely a game for you. Uh, to those of you who are watching, I'll just let you know that I have a software engineer background. I have a I have a bachelor's degree in computer system science. So there are certain things that I am aware of about computer programs and games specifically that make me want to try certain things to find bugs and or glitches. And that's why I will be doing certain things in this game, right? That on one hand make you say, oh, the, immer the immersion is broken. But on the other hand, if I can do it and it doesn't impact things all this much, why not do it? Uh, if I can continue playing through the game and still have fun and other players do not suffer, then why not? Okay, so what do we got? We have 35 blades. Now you may be asking, how is it that I have 35 blades when I only had 20 raw steel? Wasn't it 20? Yes, it was. And the reason why, or I think it was 20, you can go and check in the video, but what happens is when I was clicking really, really quickly, Oh, while I was working with the Smith's Fire and then with the Anvil and then I was working with the Water Bucket and I furiously clicked what happens is inside of the inventory when raw steel gets turned into um, gets turned into a glowing steel and then it gets turned into uh, a glowing blade and then it gets turned into a blade that's essentially an item it's a different kind of item that gets added to your inventory but because because of the way the system is designed when you put in one of the items and there is this interaction like when you dip the uh, the uh, glowing blade into the water to cool it off it decreases the counter for the glowing blade by one and increases the counter for raw blade or for, for what is this called again um for blade by one so glowing blade is decreased by one and blade is increased by one and what happens is because i clicked really 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 quickly the, there are processes, This the, any computer game is a process, right? Things are running in the background. And this is a bug. Uh, it's, it should not be happening. If maybe if I would, you know, click it faster, the count should be the same. I should have 20 blades. But because I was doing it at, m quicker than the game anticipated, the counter for plus one this variable was created more times than it needs to be created and as the processes went through this plus one just happened almost double the times and that's the bug and because of this i get a heck of a lot of materials for free so last time when i went onto the grindstone uh, the game crashed, so let us save the game again so I don't have to go through the forging process. And this guy is honing, so I'm gonna take out the sword. Are you planning to attack me? They're aggroed. And now the grindstone is free. So I'm going to start clicking really, really fast. Maybe maybe you can hear the clicks of my of the keyboard. I'm press, pressing the forward key really, really fast. I don't know if you can hear it, but if you can, then th that's what's happening. And I'm trying to bug the game out to give me more, more blades, right? So I can save up that time. Now, if you 
got a little bit out of it in terms of uh, education and understanding how programming works, I'm glad. Or how computers games work, or if you enjoy that little bit, then I'm glad. Do, 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 do. I'm still clicking. Okay, we're done. And now I will move back from the grindstone. Save the game again. I will not count. I will not count the number of blades, but I have a ton of them. Like a lot, 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 lot of them. And now I have all of those raw crude swords that I can buy and sell. And this is something that they have fixed in Gothic 2. They made like a stack of a stack of swords. So in here, all of those swords they would be displayed as one uh, crude sword with like a number by them instead of having a whole bunch of them like i'm holding the down button and i probably have like i probably have around 40 of them so yeah this is a nice little tidbit and a nice little guide if you want to if you want to bug through the through this aspect of the game and not have to worry about or for a while you can go ahead and do that. And actually, um, if you're watching this, um, I'll, I'm watching the Twitch chat currently. I will pose a question. If you want me to do this process again, I'll do it. If you don't, then, well, don't post anything in the chat. Um, Basically, right now, I have gotten an enormous amount of an enormous amount of ore in terms of materials in here. So, oh wait, I think, oh, oh, the the game started lagging a little bit, uh, and the reason why the game started lagging is because, um, let's see, list. It's 11:02. Like I think you, I think you may have seen the little jump. Right now, the time is 11.02, and what this means is, in the background, the NPC's schedules and what the NPCs are doing has changed. So at 11 a.m., something happens, and uh, like around the world for just about every, every once, so the game had to do something in the background to make the NPCs move around and do something else for the schedule, and that's why the game itself lagged. So it's not... It's not my computer that is not strong enough. It is the way the, com the game is built in the background that made the game slow down. So if when you play video games, if the game is slow, it is not necessarily the power of your PC that makes the game slow. And it's, a, it's really important for you to know this if you want to analyze and understand why is it the games be behave the way they do. All right, that's a nice little uh, nice little segue, and this is the software engineer in me talking. Um, it's something that I find fascinating, personally. All right, so if you like the stream, give it a follow. If you're watching this on YouTube and you subscribe, thank you very much, and you can follow me on Twitter, and on YouTube to see the continuation of this playthrough and I will be posting that. Oh, well, see? At 11.02, the rain has begun, right? So the clouds begin to form and then the weather has changed. All right, so this is going to be, um, this is going to be the, the theme of the game for a while where uh, actually this this whole mechanic of rain and because the rain is there the game actually didn't have this originally in it well, I don't know if you can see it, but right now I paused it and I think you can see the rain droplets move up and down because they are being drawn and this was added in in this mod that I'm playing which is um, um, what is it? 1.08k, and this is unfortunately one of the reasons why game sometimes crashes. It's because of the issues with weather. It's unfortunate, and this is this is something that I just have to deal with. 
So, yeah, give my channel a follow and give my YouTube a subscribe and give a follow on Twitter. And um, I'll see you next time. And in the next video, I will uh, do a little bit more things in the old camp and then uh, explore the colony some more. So, thank you very much for watching and uh, good luck to you.